Bill, fantastic to meet you. Thanks Thank so you. much for taking the time to, to chat with us. So for people who don't know anything about Duplica, yes. what's this story about? Um, it's about uh, two brothers who have a condition in which they share the same body. So it's about how they uh, maintain their lives uh, taking shifts of consciousness. Uh, one is conscious during the day and one at night. And what happens when one of them falls in love, which is against their rules, and uh, what happens to, to them when that takes place. And then what sparked the idea for uh, this film? Where did yeah. the story come from? Um, the story came from uh, one of the writers had the idea of two people inside the same body. Um, he said that it came from when he was in high school and he went to his locker and it wouldn't open, but he knew that he couldn't have forgotten the combination. So his imagination went to this idea of that someone else took over his body at night, leaving him to deal with the ramifications of it during the day. And then that became this sort of idea of coexistence and that they live by a set of rules that keeps them alive, but also sort of ironically keeps them from living. And that became the initial germ of the idea. Then we explored their, the, basically a love story between the two brothers and their relationship um, dealing with this condition. Yeah. Ooh. You've got a fantastic cast there, not yeah. just Ansel, see the success from Baby Driver, yes. but then also Patricia Clarkson and yeah. Suki Waterhouse. Yes. So how did you, you know, get this cast together and what's it yeah. like working with them? Um, the cast, we were very lucky. At the, um, the script um, was very attractive. To, you know, we started with our lead and um, people responded very well to the script. Actors did. Um, many great actors um, responded well to it, and many of whom I met. And um, Ansel, I had seen, you know, he hadn't, he had shot Baby Driver, but it had not come out. So there wasn't that much of his work in existence, but I saw him in The Faults in Our Stars, and I thought he was great, and saw this John side of the character, very charismatic, very funny, very outgoing. And, um, and then I, I, wasn't sure about the Jonathan side because he has to pull off this dual role. And I found a film called Men, Women, and Children where it's an ensemble film and he has a, a part in it where he plays a sort of a depressed teenager who strikes up a, a relationship with an introverted uh, classmate. And it was very, you know, subtle and delicate and I saw a more interior side to him. So from his work, I knew that he could play both characters. And then we met and hit it off. And, and we cast him. Mm. And the others, so once we had, Patricia is someone I had in mind for that character while writing it. I was a huge fan of hers. And um, so we sent it to her and she responded and had met Ansel, I believe at Toronto Film Festival and um, just kind of like loved him and was excited to play opposite him. And uh, Suki came about through a process of auditions. We we, um, uh, we saw a lot of actors for that part, and uh, she won the part. She was great. Yeah. And you seem to kind of play with the sci-fi genre, you know? Yeah. It's kind of a sort of unique take on that. So, what did you have in mind? Did you have other films that inspired that kind of style, or did you want to try and do something new? Yeah. So. Um, there were a lot of films that inspired me for this film, and some of them were just straightforward dramas, and then others were science fiction films that are more emotional, sort of humanistic science fiction films, particularly um, Never Let Me Go, which was a film from a few years ago, um, shot here in England. Um, Ex Machina, Blade Runner, those sort of uh, moodier, low-key, character-driven science fiction stories where the science fiction element is is fairly subtle. Um, so I wanted it to be focus on the drama among the characters but have in its atmosphere an element of sort of otherworldliness or science fiction. There also seems to be lots of other themes that, that come yeah. up through this, you know, about identity and relationships. And, yeah. You know, yeah. What do you think some of the themes are and what do you think people might take away from it? Well, I, I see it, yes, there are, there are themes of identity and self-control and uh, communication, 
love, the longing to connect to another person, intimacy, uh, fear of intimacy. I, I see it um, as this sort of weird coming of age story, really. It's about growing up and the sort of the fear of growing up and shedding your skin and, and you know, that we all have sort of an, an inner Jonathan who's sort of keeps us safe. Uh, but also holds us back a little bit. So to me, it's about kind of, you know, stepping out of that radius, that comfort zone and allowing yourself to be vulnerable and take risks in order to grow. And that's sort of what I see happening to the, the two main characters, John and Jonathan, but also to the others as well. How does it feel to have this film as part of the London Film Festival? It feels great, yeah. It's an amazing festival and uh, very proud to be here, yeah. Yeah. Can you tell us about any future projects you might already have in the pipeline or stuff that you've got ambitions to work on? Yes, um, I have a few things uh, that I'm developing. Um, one is, uh, it's a drama about a couple, two men who are married and with a child uh, who are divorcing. It's more of a straightforward drama um, about um, their family and how they redefine their relationships while going through a divorce. Um, I have another sort of supernatural project that I'm working on about that focuses on the relationship between two women, one of whom is uh, kind of a spiritualist kind of uh, medium. Um, and then uh, I have a long time project that I want to get going, which is about the silent film actress Louise Brooks, uh, who was a silent film star in the 20s and then became sort of a famous recluse. She's sort of like the real life Norma Desmond of Sunset Boulevard. Mm -hmm. Boulevard. Um, but um, that's something I've already written and hope to get off the ground at some point. Yeah. How do you see the broader film industry at the moment? I mean, it's interesting, I think, just even mm. looking at this festival, the kind yeah. of spectrum of stories that are coming out. There's yeah. a lot of political stuff, perhaps owing to our climate. Yes. There's also a lot of really fascinating roles coming out for women. Yes. How, how yes. do you see that it might be changing, or, mm. or how do you see it right now? Um, I think um, it is yes, changing, yeah. and I think it's changing because of the political climate. And um, I think, you know, Hollywood is slowly changing uh, to be uh, more inclusive and representative, representative of a more diverse array of characters, which is exciting for me. Um, I also think television has changed feature filmmaking. Um, it's hopefully in a good way. I, you know, I still. I like to make movies for the cinema, for people to come together and sit together in a shared space and have that sort of shared emotional experience. Um, and, uh, you know, television is so strong now that it's sort of, uh, I think it's, it's, it's putting, uh, it's making us feature filmmakers sort of think more creatively and sort of think of ways to, you know, how is this different from television? How can we make this more interesting and more cinematic? So. It's only positive. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks yeah. It was great.